evening and welcome to the January 21st uh, organizational meeting of the Board of Education. At this time, I'd ask everyone to turn off their cell phones and please join, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and I'll ask uh, Member Baker to take roll call. I'd be happy to. President Singer. Here. Uh, Scott McFarland. He is absent. Member Baker. Here. Member Blazy. Here. Whoops. Member Fridell. Here. Member Lauterbach. Here. And Member Rausch. Here. All Great. We have a quorum. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right, uh, first order of business tonight, we'd like to take a ceremonial oath of office. When candidates were uh, elected into office, they had to come into the admin center and take the oath of office within 10 days. But as a, a ceremony, we like to do this now so that our uh, public can, can hear us take the oath of office. So Cindy, could you uh, help us out? John Phil. <coughs> I stand right in front of the door. All right. All right. Just repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly, I do solemnly swear. swear. Or affirm. Or, or, or affirm. affirm. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of member, of the office of member, of the Board of Education, of the Board of Education, of Midland Public Schools, of Midland Public Schools, Midland County, Michigan, Midland County, Michigan, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome John and Phil. It's exciting to have you um, on the board with us. Uh, now into uh, the next order of business is um, ele election of, of an acting chairperson. So um, the election of an acting chairperson who will conduct the meeting until the president has been elected. Past pra practices has been that the previous year's president conducts this part of the meeting. So is there a motion that I serve as acting chairperson until the election of a chairperson has been complete? So moved. Support. Moved by Fridell, support by Baker. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, uh, I'm going to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Second order of business is that for the acting chairperson to adopt a secretary as a temporary secretary until the secretary of the board has been created. And I would like to appoint, I'll appoint Lynn Baker to be our temporary secretary. All right, uh, going into uh, identification of the uh, district's legal status. Uh, item two, uh, this is for information. So under the revised school code, MCL 380.1, the district's legal status was defined as a general power school district, uh, effective July 1st of 1996. So this is just for information. Uh, going into item three is the election of officers of the board. And just to let you know how that happens is uh, at the first meeting in November, the board uh, appoints by concess concession or consensus a three-person nominating committee. All the board members um, submitted their preferences to that nominating committee. The nominating co committee then prepared a prospective slate of officers um, and I contacted the members involved for their approval prior to the organizational meeting where the election of the committee assignments are finalized. 
And then after that point, then I'll appoint uh, members of the committees. So at this time, we'll move into uh, action, recommended for action as outlined in the board policy. Uh, I would like to ask for a uh, motion to approve the slate that the uh, nominating committee proposed. So the slate is President, Ms. Pamela Singer, Vice President, Mr. Scott McFarland, Secretary, Ms. Lynn Baker, and Treasurer, Ms. Mary Friedel. Moved by Lutterbach. Support. Support by Friedel. And at this time, is there any discussion or additional nominations? Seeing none, we'll mo move into a vote. All in favor? of approving the recommended um, committee, uh, or, I'm sorry, the recommended slate of officers, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All right. Very good. Thank you. And now we move into item four, which is appointment for study committees. Uh, Item 4.1 is for information, 2019 study committee appointments. Uh, administrative services will be Brad Blazy as the chair, John Lauterbach and Lynn Baker. The curriculum instruction and assessment committees will be Lynn Baker as chair, Mary Friedel and Phil Rausch as members. The finance facilities and operations committee will be Mary Friedel as chair, Pam Singer and Scott McFarland. And the Human Resources uh, Committee will be Scott McFarland as chair, John Lauterbach, and Phil Rausch. Other committee appointments will be for the 2019 District School Improvement Committee, Phil Rausch. For the 2019 Gerstacker Teacher Proficiency Award, John Lauterbach. For the 2019 Distinguished Service Award, oh, did I? Did that right? Did, okay. Uh, Mary Friedel, and for the 2019 Advisory Board on Instruction on Sex Ed, Scott McFarland. And that uh, now we move into item five, which is scheduled meetings for the 2019 calendar year. Item 5.1, recommended for action. The Board of Education is required to give public notice of the dates of its regular meetings and of any special meetings. The recommended regular scheduled meetings of the Board of Education of the Midland Public Schools for 2019 are listed in your agenda. All meetings are held at 7 p.m. at the Midland Public Schools Administration Center and dates of special meetings or changes in the dates of the regular meetings will be posted at least 18 hours prior to the time of the special rescheduled meetings. The superintendent or designee is authorized to post notices of meetings at the discretion of the Board of Education. And you can see um, in your agenda all the dates of the Board of Ed Education meetings. And in June we'll have two meetings because one includes a budget workshop. Item 6, 2.18, uh, item 6, 2018 appointments, designations, Oh, that's for action. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, if I would um, accept a motion for approving the calendar for the 2019 school year, Board of Education. Moved by Lauterbach. Support. Support by Friedel. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of accepting the schedule as stated, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it carries. Thanks, Cindy. Uh, moving into item six, which is 2018 appointments, designations, and Board of Education matters. This is also recommended for action. Item 6.1.1 is appointment of the Board of Education's legal counsel. Uh, the firm of Posnack, Dyer, and Kennar, and Garshaw, LaPointe, and Butler, Lusk, Albert, Albertson, PLC and Thrun Law Firm have been designated as the board's legal counsel. In addition, the superintendent is authorized to retain special legal counsel through other legal firms as appropriate. 
It is recommended that the board approve legal representation as outlined through December 31st, 2019. At this time, I will accept a motion for the appointment of the Board of Education's legal counsel. Support. Moved by Lauterbach, support by <coughs> Rausch. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All in favor of approving the appointment of the Board of Education Legal Counsel, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes. Item 6.1.2 is fiscal designation and authorization. Uh, it is recommended that the board designate Chemical Bank and any other public depositories qualified in accordance with the MCL 380.1221. The revised school code of Michigan as approved depositories of the school district's funds through December 31st 2019 the treasurer of the Board of Education is the legal financial officer for the school district and as such is authorized to sign checks for Midland Public Schools the superintendent and associate superintendent for finance are the only members of the staff authorized to sign checks for the Midland Public Schools. It is recommended that the board approve this authorization through December 31st, 2019 for these staff members. So at this time, I'll accept a motion for item 6.1.2, fiscal designation and authorizations. Support. Moved by Lauterbach, <laughs> support by Rausch. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote for, uh, to approve fiscal designation and authorizations. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. And it passes. Item 6.1.3 is personnel authorizations. The board in previous years has authorized the superintendent or his designee to sign any legal document relating to personnel actions, which the board has approved. This authorization has been made at the organizational meeting for the entire year rather than granting the authorization at each board meeting. It is recommended that the board continue this authorization through December 31st, 2019 to the superintendent or his designee. It is further recommended that the board delegate authority to accept resignations, retirements to the superintendent of schools or his designee through December 31st, 2019. Resignations, retirements will be reported in subsequent agendas. I'll now accept a motion to approve item 6.1.3, personnel authorizations. So moved. Support. Moved by Fridell, support by Lauterbach. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All in favor of approving personnel authorizations, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it carries unanimously. Item 6.1.4, hard cap for employees medical benefit plan. Public Act 152 of 2011 limits a public employer's expenditures for medical benefit plans. Under the act, a public employer that offers or contributes to a medical benefit plan for its employees is prohibited from paying more of the annual cost or illustrative rate and any payment for reimbursement of co-pays, deductibles, or payments into health savings accounts or similar accounts used for health care cost, then a total of $6,685.17 times the number of employees with single-person coverage, $13,980.75 times the number of employees with individual and spouse coverage, plus $18,232.31 times the number of employees with family coverage. Administration recommends that the board reaffirm the district's commitment to pay no more than the hard cap for the employee's medical benefit plan per calendar year 2019. I'll now accept a motion for item 6.1.4, hard cap for employee medical benefit plan. Support. Moved by Lauterbach, support by Friedel. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All in favor of approving hard cap for employees' medical benefit plan, say aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Moving into item 6.1.5, administrative <coughs> assistant authorization. 
It is recommended that the superintendent's designee, the administrative assistant to the superintendent, be authorized to assist the secretary of the board in election matters through December 31st, 2019. I will accept a motion for item 6.1.5, administrative assistant authorization. So moved. Moved by Friedel. Support. S support by Rausch. Any comments? Or discussion. Seeing none, we'll move into a vote for item 6.1.5, administrative assistant authorization. All those in favor of supporting it, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. And that passes unanimously. We've reached the end of our organizational meeting. At this time, I'd, uh, I'm open for a motion to adjourn the organizational meeting. So moved. Moved by Fridell, support, who did the support come from? Lauterbach, all in favor? Aye. 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 And we adjourned. Now we'll move right uh, into our regular, regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. I might need a drink of water after all that though. <laughs> Okay, so uh, welcome to our regularly let scheduled uh, January 21st Board of Education meeting. At this time, I would like our uh, Secretary Baker to take roll. Be happy to. President Singer. Here. Vice Pre President McFarland. Absent. Secretary Baker. Here. Treasurer Fidel. Here. Member Blasey. Here. Member Lauterbach. Here. And Member Rausch. Here. Great, thank you, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Okay, you might want to note that um, Scott's absent tonight because of a medical condition. So. Yeah, very, uh, thank you. Um, Scott McFarland had a medical condition and he uh, could not make it to tonight's meeting. Uh, he will be here, he plans to be here at our, our next meeting and um, our thoughts are, uh, and prayers are with him. So moved. <laughs> So we'll move into item two, which is our consent agenda. Um, are there any items that anyone would like to uh, remove or to the consent agenda? Okay, I will uh, accept a motion actually to approve the consent agenda. Items 2.1, approval of the minutes. Item 2.2, Persons recommended for employment. Item 2.3, administration that recommends a renewal of the adult ed cooperative agreement between Bullet Creek and the district. Approval of item 2.4, which is a payment of the school system's bills. And an approval of item 2.5, which is legal um, invoices for payment. And I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Support. Moved by Lauterbach, support by Rausch, um, and all in favor of um, all in favor of approving consent agenda. Say aye. 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 All right. Item three. Now on to. Uh, I'll turn this over to Mr. Cheryl for some special awards. Our shining star um, we're going to recognize today is Mary Zeitler. Mary would come on up. She gets to stand by me while I read all kinds of good stuff about you, Mary. So, um, Mrs. Zeitler joined the NPS team in 1991 as an English teacher at Jefferson Intermediate School. Her entire 28-year NPS career has been spent teaching English to the Jefferson Huskies. A former co-worker once said, Mrs. Zeitler is a fantastic teacher. Her classroom is filled with activity from the moment class starts until she releases students. Students know the goals of the day, work hard to attain them, and are then able to review the material. Mrs. Zeitler is a valuable member of the Jefferson Middle School staff. Mary earned her Bachelor's of Science in English from Central Michigan University in 1991 and her Master's degree in Middle School Classroom Teaching from Saginaw Valley State in 1998. Mrs. Zeitler was nominated for a Shining Star by an NPS parent. Among her comments were the following. Mary has a passion for engaging her students that goes well beyond just teaching them from the syllabus. She is constantly looking for books and activities that engage the curiosity and thirst for exploring the literary world. The students truly enjoy her class. <clears throat> Mary also heads the Young Writers Club in collaboration with Alda B. Dow Home and Studio, the 
the enrichment program allows students to explore writing in an inspirational environment. She is truly devoted to teaching. Congratulations, Mary. Thank you. Our second shining star is not here tonight, but I'll read a little bit about her. So Tracy uh, Renus is um, one of our paras. Mrs. Renus joined the MPS staff in 2010 as an assistant teacher in the kindergarten complement program at Plymouth Elementary. In 2012, Tracy joined the para paraprofessional team at Plymouth and has assisted students and teachers in Title I special education as a noon supervisor and many other areas. Tracy was nominated for a Shining Star by MPS staff member as well as a parent. Among their comments were the following. Mrs. Arenas is always looking for our children, looking out for our children and keeping them safe. When my two sons were fighting and wouldn't hold hands in the parking lot, she asked one of them to hold her hand and she got us to the car safe and sound. Mrs. Arenas is positive, organized, caring, calm, and encourages independence while, she, while, she, while always knowing when the additional support is needed. She goes out of her way to help not only her one-to-one -one students, but all students in the classroom, on the playground, in the lunchroom. Mrs. Arenas is a team player and a pleasure to work with. So congratulations, Tracy. And the second presentation we have tonight is in front of you. As you may recall, our veteran board members and our new board members, January. Welcome, January. You get right off the bat, you get recognition. Um, January is... Um, Board of Education Appreciation Month. Um, you have several items in front of you. Um, you have the wall art. Our bright green cards are from the Chestnut Hill fourth grade students in Mrs. Van Hoy's classroom. I think Mrs. Van Hoy is here tonight, so you can thank her very and her nice. students. Uh, and two of her students here she brought with her, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Beautiful, beautiful messages. Um, a certificate of appreciation from the administration here, an NPS pen, and then it has been our practice for a while now. Um, you have some library books, new library books that, that are placed in front of you. Um, they have some of them have your names in there, and will be placed in the media centers in your, in your honor. So you can take a look at those, take a moment, read them if you want, and then we'll get them back into the library going forward. Excellent. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So um, one more item, the, the green, maybe pencil holder, um, is from our teacher, and, and Cindy's going to make me say this wrong. You may have to say this right. Tr Tr Trisha Zendrek? Anybody? No? Zendrek? Zendrek, something like that? Yeah. So at Siebert, and it's her art angels made that for you as well. Thank you. Yes, Thank appreciate you. all you do and the many uh, hours you put in and um, some of these meetings that we're going to have in the future here. So thank you very much. Right. It's always wonderful to be recognized. And uh, every year that we've received cards from kids and they've taken the time to write such meaningful um, comments to each of the board members. So we sure appreciate um, the the students taking part and uh, reaching out to us it, it means a lot and all the artwork is uh, is surely appreciated and I, I heard Mary McFarland saying tonight she or <laughs> Mary Purdell saying tonight that she was going to read the books before she was going to let anyone else uh, take a look at them so uh, thank you thank you for the books and we look forward to dropping those off at the schools as well. Does anyone else have any comments or they'd like to add? It's just, a, it's always a pleasure to um, be honored for something that um, I feel truly blessed to be a part of this board, to be part of such a great uh, school district. And uh, it's the parents and the teachers and all the employees that make it happen. So it's great. We would really love it if we could get a quick picture of the girls right out of tennis. Oh. Very good. Oh, that would be great. Allison and Kayla, come on. Come on. How are you? I'm glad you came out. 
Allison, is that it? Yeah, and Kayla. Thank nice you for to meet making you. Hi. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Let's well, get right in the center. Right here. Right here. This is going to be our first picture of this board together, you know. Yeah, I love this. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Thanks, Thanks for girls. coming. Thank you. Thank you. So nice. <clears throat> All right, are we ready to get back to business? Oh. Moving into item three, which is 3.3, uh, .3, which is for action tonight, we have the asbestos abatement at Adams Elementary. Mr. Cooper. Yeah, not that that's hard to follow any of that stuff, but here's some asbestos abatement for you. Uh, as you know, we start uh, Adams as the remaining elementary school to be worked on, and of course the abatement's one of the uh, early things that gets done as it's being demoed. Um, uh, like you have done previously, Nova is the company that uh, works for us and supervises all the abatement. Uh, we had uh, three bidders in the low bid quality environmental services out of Gladwin. We're recommending for $187,982. Very good. Uh, at this time, I'd accept a motion for action for uh, the asbestos abatement at Adams Elementary. Make a motion to approve the asbestos abatement. Support moved by Mr. Roush, support by Fredell. Uh, is there any discussion? Just one quick question. The, the bid includes the IH industrial health and everything else to monitor while they're doing the cleanup? Yeah, it includes it's the complete packet, not that they don't sometimes find additional areas they have to bait and we have to maybe add something on, but it includes okay, everything so they've done. School from. practice, um, NOVA is our asbestos consultant. They work for us. They supervise the contractor on site, um, and they uh, make do air quality checks the entire time. So they have a okay. scientist there on site who measures that and makes sure his compliance is being followed by the contractor all the way through. They bid it for us. They handle all those specialty areas. Okay. That's something our <clears throat> construction manager does not do. That's a, by law you have to have a consultant. Yep. Yeah. Okay, if there's no more questions, then we'll move uh, to a vote. So to approve this asbestos abatement for Adams Elementary, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? And that passes unanimously. We'll move into item 3.4 again for action. This is the Media Center Furniture Purchase for H.H. Dow High, Midland High, Jefferson Middle School, and Northeast Middle School. Mr. Cooper? Yeah, this one is, as you know, one of the big projects we're doing this summer are the four secondary media centers. Um, renovating those, bringing them up to uh, current, uh, I don't want to say, uh, college-style standards in, in those areas. Um, this is the same company... We've worked with before Duell. Uh, they've actually done all our media centers and will help us finish off Adams when that will come here in a, a month or two. Uh, all the pricing has stayed very consistent. Um, if you think in terms of what it's cost is that the elementary schools, Northeast and Jefferson, are right in that ballpark, and they're actually slightly larger than our elementary ones are. And the high schools, not quite double, but uh, when you th consider the high school, the amount of furniture and the amount of area in those uh, it's it's going to take more to, to get those done. I included the drawings. Again, they're just drawings, and you can't see all the uh, technology that's going to be in there, too, because it's just the furniture and how the furniture get laid out. But I think sometimes that gets missing when I just bring you the bid for all the uh, different. You see a total. You don't really get to see uh, what that will look like compared to what you might remember a, a high school media center looking like. Uh, the grand total with Duell out of Holland, uh, $494,651.35. And like I said, that's for this one, there's a few more furniture bids that will still be coming because we have atoms that we have not gone through yet. But um, we're recommending at this time, again, we want to make sure that we're ready as best we can at the start of school. So um, we'll get working on them as fast as we can even at the end of this year, and we'll certainly try to have, and that's why we want to order the furniture far enough in advance is to have it ready to go because uh, that will be one of the big components of getting it back up and running when school starts. Great. Thank you. This is for action. So um, I'll accept a motion to approve the Media Center for Furniture Purchase for H.H. Dow High, Midland High, Jefferson Middle, Northeast Middle Schools. So moved. 
Support. Moved by Lauterbach, support by Rausch. Is there any discussion? Just wanted to say, um, looking at the drawings and, and the proposal, um, the mobility, the comfort, um, multi multi-purpose use, um, which our media centers now have to be able to do. Um, so it looks spot on. I have one request, Bob, is that um, these, these proposal, proposals, excuse me, are a little bit different than ones that we've had in the past because they did a lump sum item or a lump sum line item for the media center furniture. And I wondered if we could just as supplementary to this to have the full breakdown because in the past we've had two or three pages of the itemized breakdown just to support that it, number. Uh, we can do that. Usually the supplemental one has been on the other corporation that's been doing our furniture for the maker spaces and the cafeteria tables. Duell has been basically general and then goes with the drawing, but I can ask him for a, a breakout on that. We, we go over that at the time, but when he gives me the quotes, you see what you see, but we know what items are on there from that. But I'll ask him, and, and I'll get that to you. Okay. It'd just be a supporting document for yep. this. That'd be Absolutely. Great. I know we have one high school student in the in the audience that's looking forward to new furniture in the media center. So I think this will be wonderful. Looking at the drawings, I'm very excited about it and seeing the quality of the furniture that we've uh, brought in from the manufacturer. Um, I'm excited to continue uh, working with them. If there's no other comments or discussion, we'll move into a vote. All in favor? of approving item 3.4, Media Center Furniture Purchase for Dow High, Midland High, Jefferson, and Northeast Middle Schools say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, and it carries unanimously. Moving into item 3.5 for action again, diesel fuel and no lead gasoline. Does anyone want to talk about yeah, this? Yeah, I've got that too. Um, so what we have here is a recommendation, a little bit different than we've done in the past. Typically with our fuel, we've done like a spot bid where we go out and, and uh, bid off a, a list for three or four companies. Uh, we're going to try this a little differently, so we bid out the price. Price gets set, as it says there, based on the unbranded average of public weekly. So that, that's the same. When you bid this out, you're really bidding out that uh, fixed price differential. That's the delivery and, you know, getting it from point A to point B and into our tanks. And so the low bidder, uh, which was uh, 0.0355 cents for diesel and 0 0.0259 for no lead, um, is uh, the uh, Petroleum Traders Corporation out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. They have uh, offices other places and they work in multiple states. Uh, they use third-party local contractors um, taking the petroleum out of those areas. So um, we decided to go with the bid this time. We'll see. It's only a one-year contract. There are two one-year renewals. Um, if this doesn't work out to be uh, more cost-effective, then we can go back to our uh, spot bids. So um, we're asking you to approve it at this time. Okay, thank you. So I'll accept a motion uh, to approve the contract to purchase diesel fuel and no lead gasoline for 2019. So moved. Support. Moved by Lauterbach, support by Rausch. Is there any discussion? I see in the notes, Bob, it says, talks about short loads and uh, pump. Obviously, pump in the tank is going to happen every time. That uh, it's actually, and I'd ask the same question you just asked me. Yeah. The pump in the tank has to do if the pump's not in the ground, which is not, so it doesn't pertain to us. Okay. So I guess when they bid it out, they always bid a secondary cost if it's an above ground. If it's uh, above ground, they use, actually have to use a pump off the truck. If it's a, a below ground, I know this because I grew up in the business, um, it's gravity feed into the ground, so that's why they charge you a fee, fee for that. And I did check on the short loads, too, because it was my question right away, would that factor in? And typically the way we fill, that doesn't hit us at all. We're at, and that tends to be, um, um, we're measuring the tank pretty accurately. We're not filling that frequently. Much more diesel than gas. Gas is So, again, is that's, that would be a retailer um, who's trying to keep their tanks full. Um, their capacity is probably day to day, and so they try to estimate the day ahead how much gas they're going to pump the next day. They order this much, and if they end up where the tank does not hold it because they didn't pump as much, they charge a short little fee when that comes because so they have to take it back. 
So how long? How often do we fill our tanks? I don't know if I give you. Two, three times, I think Lori said. Yeah, it's not the 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 gas, for example, could could be one big time because uh, uh, the gas we're not running as much through, so it's it's not that frequent. Okay, if there's no other questions, then we will move into a vote. Um, all those who approve the contract to, for the diesel fuel and no lead gas for 2019, please say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. So now we move into item four, which is request to address the board. And I believe we have one request, Mark Hackberg. As you just said, my name is Mark Hackbarth. I reside at 1910 Westbury Court in Midland. I teach at Jefferson, and I'm president of the Midland City Education Association. First, I'd like to welcome the new members to the board, uh, John Lauterbach and Phil Rausch. Excited to have you on the board. Looking forward to working with you. And you must think the school board thing is great. You get showered with gifts <laughs> you know, at each of the meetings. So, But that's what brings me here, not to shower you with all sorts of gifts, but you know, for uh, School Board Appreciation Month. Um, the Midland City Education Association in, in for School Board Appreciation Month has decided to donate seven books by the best-selling author Alan Gratz to each of our middle school libraries. Um, if you're not familiar with Alan Gratz, um, he's a former middle school teacher and has written action-packed books that are perfect for middle schoolers. Um, his topics of history and sports and his fast-paced um, writing style engage even the most reluctant learners. Um, his historical fiction titles like Refugee and Project 1065 also appeal to teachers. Um, they make great read-aloud selections and motivate students to read nonfiction articles related to the topics. And they also invite rich classroom discussions on human rights, empathy, personal responsibility, and other meaningful topics. So currently, a small group of ELA teachers at both Jefferson and Northeast are collaborating um, to create a possible cross-district book study of Mr. Gratz's books and possibly even a visit by Mr. Gratz. That's oh, still yeah. out in the air right now. But So it's with a sincere gratitude to the MPS Board of Education that the educators of the MCA donate these worthwhile books to our middle school libraries. Again, thank you for your service to our students, parents, staff, and the community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. And Mike. the best news is you don't have to take a picture with me. It's okay. <laughs> Has anyone read any of Alan Gratz's books? We'll have to look into that. Refugee? Refugee? Yeah. All right. All right, now we'll move into item five, which is curriculum instruction and assessment. Uh, we have no meeting minutes, but uh, we do have for action a major change proposal. We do. Good, Good evening. We're bringing back to you the five major change proposals that were presented for your information at the December meeting. Uh, those include the elementary world language proposal with uh, Mandarin Chinese being taught at Woodcrest and the four language and culture program at Adams, and that will continue into next year with this approval. Elementary science proposal uh, extends our work with the Serial City Science Kits, really rounding out our science mm -hmm. curriculum uh, in grades three, five, so all of our elementary schools will have a full science curriculum, and that complements Project Lead the Way and our IB PYP program nicely. We have a high school math proposal, which really is a two-year proposal in response to the International Baccalaureate Curriculum Revisions. Uh, so we're responding to that and then using this opportunity to update one of our senior level math classes. We're also bringing on uh, a, an IB science course, environmental science course, so that's the fourth major change proposal. And the fifth one is high school yearbook. We are adding a point three accelerated option uh, being uh, in the same section as that point two offering. So uh, these four, five, excuse me, five proposals are uh, open for your action this evening and of course we make sure and inform staff that this is pending final budget approval uh, later this spring. Very good, thank you. So at this time, I will uh, accept a motion uh, to approve item 5.1 for the major change proposals. So moved. Moved by Mary Friedel. Second. Support. Support by John Lauterbach. And is there any discussion? Very excited about it. 
So good stuff. Nice. Mm -hmm. And it's it's all across the board, Penny. I just think that's so neat, you know, from the elementary and and uh, the language, science, um, and even the yearbook. That's just that's exciting to see what the kids will do. There's so, so many uh, business uh, items that go along with that yearbook, and a lot of um, interesting life skills that they use in that class, and then of course with math and science. Thank so you. thank you for all the hard work. Oh, thank you. Very good. And we've uh, heard some great things about the elementary world language class and the uh, kids in elementary school. So <clears throat> great things happening all the way around. At this time, uh, we'll vote to approve uh, item 5.1 for the major change proposals. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. And it passes unanimously. And moving into item 5.2, again for action, we have textbook adoption. Do you have that as well? We do. All right. Uh, in December, we brought to you for information and for the 28-day uh, open exam period uh, a text that's to be used in both our sixth grade Spanish as well as our Spanish 1 class. The title of that text is Ghost. We, uh, pending approval, will be purchasing both the English and Spanish version uh, to be used accordingly. This book is uh, has been vetted by our Spanish teachers and our curriculum specialist and is recommended uh, for your approval this evening. Great, thank you. And I'll accept a motion for approval of item 5.2, textbook adoption. So moved. Support. Moved by Fidel, support by Baker. And is there any discussion? I expressed to Penny that my own, I, I, the book was great. Um, a lot of good topics addressed within the book. It gives you a good, good flavor for culture. Um, I'm just concerned about the binding on the book and if we can look into a more durable binding for the book. Absolutely, we can check into that. Okay, and we'll move into a vote. All in favor of approving item 5.2, the textbook adoption, say aye. 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 All opposed, and it carries unanimously. Moving into item six, which is finance facilities and operations, we have 6.1, which is uh, study committee minutes. Um, I'm reading. You can read those? Yep, I'm reading right. those. Yes, uh, FFO committee met on January 7th, and Mr. Cooper reviewed and discussed the following items with the committee. First, the November financial reports. Second, the series two bond sales timeline. Three, the asbestos abatement bid for Adams Elementary. Four, the furniture purchase for the media centers at Jefferson Northeast Middle School and H.H. Dow and Midland High School. The press box insurance update and timelines for the 2018-19 budget adjustment and the 1920 budget development. And lastly, the student enrollment for the fall of 2018-19 was reported as 7,000 685.38 FTE unaudited. This is above the 7,634 that was used in budget development. And the next meeting will be Monday, February 4th at 5 p.m. Great, thank you. I was very excited to see the numbers, uh, 7,685. Uh, uh, those were great numbers to see and uh, up Higher number than what we budgeted for is, is always a wonderful thing. Moving into item 6.2 is for information, gifts. Uh, we have a total of 20 gifts here uh, this month, totaling $18,492.64. Uh, wide range from a wide range of groups, but a lot of robotics in this one. And we have donations both from our parents, uh, businesses, uh, in the area, some foundational or parent group funds at the individual schools. Uh, we also have uh, three relatively large uh, teacher mini grants that teachers applied for and received uh, for the Midland County. It's Gerstacker teacher mini grants. And we also have some of uh, the Youth Action Council, so the community gives um, where they did some um, work there too. So that's just for information tonight. I do have, in 6.3, two items for action. Uh, the gifts total 105000 There is the 100000 STEM grant, installment three of three, from the Strauss-Hacker Foundation, and there's also a $5,000 uh, 
donation for the purchase of a therapy dog for Central Park Elementary from the Laura Ludington Hollenbeck uh, Foundation. Because of the size of those gifts, uh, those require board approval. Uh, that is the last of the STEM grants that we originally applied for back, I guess it'd be almost three years ago now. Um, you approved one from the Dow uh, Family Foundation back a month ago. So this completes it, and the therapy dog has been purchased. Yep. Um, it be trained, but it's been purchased. So those last two require your approval. Okay, thank you. So I'll accept a motion for item 6.3 to uh, accept the gifts totaling $105,000. So moved. Moved by Mr. Roush. Support. Support by Fredell. Is there any discussion? Just amazing to see the uh, community support that we have as a district. Just blown away by the, the gifts and generosity of our community. So, awesome. Absolutely. I would second that. Uh, it's uh, been wonderful to see all the STEM grants come in and this being the last one, uh, just uh, very, very grateful for that and each and every one of the, the gifts that were um, given this month is just um, amazing and, and very much appreciated by the school district. And I'm excited to see our, our therapy dog when that, when that is put into action. I know my daughter works at a school where there is a therapy dog and it's pretty amazing what that little, little dog does. So, Luna. Is that the dog's name? Luna. Oh. Excellent. Ties right in with the explorers. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, Judge Allen has a therapy dog, and in her annual report, um, she talks about the positive outcomes from having a therapy dog. And, and one of the comments was, you know, she doesn't usually see a lot of smiles from kids coming into her court, and when the therapy dog is there, she sees smiles. And uh, so I'm looking forward to... Uh, uh, having a therapy dog at Central Park and, and seeing uh, what kind of outcomes we, we see with that as well. All right, moving into, oh, uh, we have to vote. So um, all in favor of accepting the gifts totaling $105,000, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. Item seven for human resources. 7.1. Yep, I'll take 7.1. We have condolences to pass along to two families this evening. First, the family of Ward Hodge. Uh, Ward passed away on December the 17th. Mr. Hodge was a history teacher at Northeast School for 13 years, retiring in 1979. And then also to the family of Don Marquardt, who passed away on November the 23rd. Uh, he was a history teacher at Northeast for 24 years, retiring in 1993. Uh, and I'll also take item 7.2, which is retirements this evening. We have two retirements to announce. The first, uh, pains me to say this, but Mr. Robert Cooper will be retiring on June 30th. And his spouse, Ms. Wendy Cooper, a paraprofessional at Adams Elementary, will be retiring on June the 7th. So we wish you all the best. Thank you, Robert. We're not going to enjoy watching you walk out. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I would like to share something that Mr. Cooper wrote in his um, letter to us. And he has a professional philosophy. And it's to, um, what he writes is, his professional philosophy was to make a difference, whether to a student, a parent, a staff member, school or school system, whether in academics, personal or social matters, whether for a moment a class, a year, or a lifetime. I want to make a positive difference. And I uh, just feel so grateful to have you here and, and serve in the Midland Public School District. And uh, you, your service means an awful lot to us. So thank you. Thank you. And, and you have made a positive difference. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and it looks like we're moving into item 7.3, which is uh, Human Resource Study Committee minutes. I have those. 
the committee met on Thursday, December 13th, and shared and discussed information regarding beginning contract negotiations with the Midland City, City Education Association. The current contract expires in August of 2019. Very good. Thank you. Moving to item eight, which is scheduled activities. You'll find all of our board <coughs> meetings for the year are in the agenda and also on our website. Uh, we have one a month except for June where we have two, one being the board, of, uh, board workshop, budget workshop. Moving into item nine is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. Uh, we have item 9.1, letters to the, from the Board of Education to Midland Area Community Foundation, Jefferson Parent Advisory Committee, First Great Lakes Bay Region, Midland High School, Class Reunion of 68, Eider Insurance Group, and the County of Midland, Bernstein Fund. So um, all those letters will, in a pre for their gifts will go out to them. Item 9.2, for information, we have letters to the Board of Education. We have a FOIA request from Mr. Robert Taylor, a FOIA request from Petroleum Traders, and one from Mr. Joseph Stair uh, regarding communications between Woodcrest Elementary. Um, moving into item 10, we have study discussion sessions. So this is a time where uh, we can go through and have board members talk about uh, items they're grateful for or things they'd like to see uh, us move toward in the future. So Mary, I'll start with you. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say again, um, it's a pleasure serving on, on the board and um, being a part of this great district. Um, I taught here for a number of years and was glad that I could continue on in service and um, looking forward to a, a, a new year here with a new board and uh, that will accomplish and keep this school district running smoothly and uh, it continued to set the standards high for the rest of the for the rest of the state. You know, trying to be the number one school district has always been my goal. So, um, and I wanted to um, thank thank all those people, all those students again who donated gifts, and um, looking forward to reading the books um, and getting those out. I love making the deliveries to the schools and. Um, presenting them to the people in the media center. It's a lot of fun. So um, thank you. Thanks, Mary. Brad? Uh, I'd like to say thank you to the Shining Stars for all of your service to the Middle Public Schools. Um, also, like to say thank you for all of the gifts from various students uh, across the board, and also Mr. Hackbarth uh, for his gifts of the books. Um, just had a special uh, personal message for the Marcourt family. Don Marcourt was my teacher at Northeast and also my JV football coach. He, along with Mr. Byron, uh, and they made it fun, and they taught us a lot about football. And um, Great guy. Lots of wonderful stories about Mr. Marcourt, and he was uh, a favorite of very of many many people and uh, he'll be missed um, mr and mrs cooper also will be missed uh, i also have a special sporting tie to mr cooper that uh, i met mr cooper when i was pretty little um, and he was the head varsity hockey coach at middle high school and my brother Chris played on the team, and um, whether he remembers it or not, I think I filled water bottles and did whatever I could to assist, and I was just a little guy. So I have a long history, and then also going to Northeast where Mr. Cooper was. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with you the past couple of years, and obviously throughout this year will be as well, and wish you and your wife the best. Um, welcome, John and Phil. Um, Look forward to working with you over the next couple of years. And then uh, best wishes to Scott to a speedy recovery. And we'll hopefully see him back here soon. And uh, out in the public, I guess the only other thing that I could say that I had a chance to go to both a Midland High hockey game and a Dow High hockey game. Very enjoyable. Um, saw your son. And then also I think out in the community, another thing is I, bet, I believe the tennis classic is coming up here pretty soon. So um, I think that's it. Great. Thank you.
Lynn. Wow. Well, I too will say thank you for all the recognition and gifts for school board appreciation. It, even uh, after this many years, people will ask me, you know, what do you do? Is it fun? I had a friend call me that I haven't talked to in ages that was from here from Minneapolis, and she said, you're still on the school board? And I said, yep, it's still fun, and there's always so many exciting I hate to use the word things, but that's true across the board. There's just all kinds of fun things and new things and exciting um, endeavors in this district. And that leads me to thank you, Mark, and uh, all the staff, teachers, for your donation. Not only for the donation, but once again, I think we show the creativity and ingenuity talking about, you know, the teachers already talking about doing cross-school and, and what you're going to do with books. And that's so important. Um, and to all the students, I'm always amazed at the artwork and the creativity and the cards that go along with that. So it's my pleasure to serve, and I look forward to a couple more years. And welcome our, our two, Phil and John. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's a big, a steep learning curve, but we're always learning. So never feel like you're the only ones, because we all continue to learn all the time. And to Bob, you and Wendy, known you a long time, as friends, through scouts, as teacher of my kiddos and um, have always appreciated um, both of your uh, dedication to the school and I just we all wish you the best so you can go spoil those grand grandchildren and enjoy that family time it's well deserved and to our shining stars Mary and Tracy it's always a pleasure to acknowledge those that don't always get rec well deserved recognition and uh, I guess lastly it's Martin Luther King Day and um, Another thank you to all the students. There's been a lot going on, and a lot of them were involved in some great programs today to um, keep Martin Luther King's dream alive. So, appreciate that. Thank you, Lynn. Phil? Mm -hmm. um, first of all, congratulations to the January Shining Stars. It's uh, always great to hear those um, from Mr. Sharo. And I really appreciate all the gifts, and uh, Mark, thank you to the teachers for donating the books. Um, you know, over the last two and a half months since the election, I've had the opportunity to go around the district with Mr. Sharo and, and meet um, students and, and faculty members and paraprofessionals and teachers and principals. And, and I'm just blown away by the uh, dedication of our, our, our employees and, and just the heart and soul that they pour into um, the students' development just, I have no doubt in my mind that, Mary, we can, we are and can be the number one district in the state based on the, the dedication of the employees that we have in our district. You know, it, over the last week, I took my son to a JV basketball game and a hockey game as well, and, you know, even the volunteer coaches that we have, it's just amazing to see the dedication. And, uh, Bob, thank, thank you for your service and congratulations on your retirement. Um, Wish you guys the best. So. Thank you. Sean? Uh, I'd like to begin by recognizing uh, and thanking Angela Brandstad and Patrick Frizee. I wasn't here last month, and, and uh, I didn't get a you all did, but uh, I didn't get a chance to thank them for their years of service on the board and, and uh, recognize that. I think Phil and I are getting an appreciation for the amount of work that they put in, and, and we'd be remiss if we didn't recognize and thank them for that. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Mike and the administrative team for helping Phil and I get oriented and, and, uh, and up to speed. Uh, we have been on a steep learning curve, and it'll, it'll keep going, but uh, it's been made a lot easier through, through your time and, and, and patience. Um, I know I, I joined Phil in saying I'm, I'm honored to, to, uh, to be able to serve. And uh, to a young guy at Chestnut Hill named Ethan who... Sign, sign his card, your pal Ethan. Uh, <laughs> he said, uh, uh, thank you for making good rules. Uh, a, a lot of good rules like if we get to go outside. So uh, my commitment <laughs> to, to Ethan and all the other kids in the district is I'm going to do my best to, to, uh, to earn your thanks. Thank you very much. Very good. Today thanks, they John. might not have gotten to go outside. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Today might have been pushing it. It was a but little I, chilly. I want Ethan to know. I got nothing to do with snow day. <laughs> Watch your Twitter account. <laughs> oh, so thank you. Thank you for all the comments. Um, I won't repeat 
what's been already said, but uh, very appreciative of the committee that got together for nominations and all the input that the board gave. Um, gave me and the committee uh, a lot of options for where we could place each of, each one of us to use our skills to the best of our ability to really serve um, Midland Public Schools. And uh, I appreciate that. And we were all uh, right in line when we when the committee got together. Uh, it's probably the first time everybody was 100 percent and and every person uh, and where where we wanted to slate them. So uh, it was it was a really cool process. Um, a great thanks for for all the cards. I January is a clean out time, so I clean out uh, all my board information for the past year and so much information and the things that really catch my eye are the little cards and and trinkets that the kids give us and it reminds me you know we are in this for the kids we're trying to make uh, the best possible educational opportunities for our kids and make uh, Midland Public Schools um, a place that all kids want to come and feel at home and uh, I'm very excited about the administrators and the t teachers and all the education educators um, that are part of that process. And this year, uh, when we when several of us went to the Michigan Association of School Board Conference, we had a speaker talk about is our district better because of our service, and and that's what um, I try to do uh, as a board member is try to make a positive impact on this district and that's probably why when I read uh, Mr. Cooper's words they they hit home because I, I believe each one of us in, uh, at this board table wants to make Midland Public Schools um, a better place because we served. So thank you. Mr. Sherrill. So I'm going to go over my Friday letters that I write to you. I see three of the th three of the items have to do with school safety so I'll quickly mention those. Um, we had our staff members go through Alice training um, this past week. Uh, they become the trainers of the trainers, and so they'll begin to train staff and adjust our plans according to the Alice as we go forward. We also have now have all the digital radios in the district up and running. There's training ongoing on those, and um, that'll become incorporated more into our um, emergency operation plans as well as we go forward. And the third item is our school resource officers. Uh, the two additional um, that we picked up through the millage um, is now in place. They have take, they started on January 7th at our two middle schools and rotating all four officers to cover our elementaries at this point in time. Um, the next piece is agenda group transitions. Is Mr. You guys also invited Mr. Cooper, which I'm not going to do yet because I still need him for six months. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell my stories later on about Bob, but not right now. Um, and so, as you know, we've been planning that for a little while. Bob was very upfront with us, and so Brian and Bob have been in transition. Why? Penny was in transition with Brian teaching her, and um, we have uh, internally looked at our candidates um, for the Brian's present position, associate superintendent. Um, there's four of them that have shown interest. I'll meet with the, uh, all four of them, and we'll make that decision in the next couple of weeks, and we'll keep everybody informed as we move forward and get that in place because if with it being internal, we need to keep moving because there will be um, those positions to fill behind them. And the last thing I have for you um, will lead right into our closed session. So we have a tentative agreement with the MCA, and so we're going to update you on that. Um, and that's closed session because we don't share that until they've ratified, and so we hope they ratify until they take a ratification vote. And if they ratify, if they ratify and approve that, um, then it comes to you in February for approval. So again, very good um, uh, um, negotiation process we went through. And I think it was pretty fair, fair to both sides. We'll fill, fill you in those details as we go into closed session tonight. Very good. Thank you. And at this time, I would accept a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Moved by Lauterbach. Support. Support by Friedel. Uh All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, all opposed. And we'll move into closed session. Um, so at this time... Everyone will leave, and then when you come back, then we'll just adjourn the meeting. Uh, if I have any high school students that want a signature, you're welcome to come up here right now and get your signatures. And um, closed session won't take that long, I don't believe.